From lightweight, agile fighters to high-performance interceptors, the Imperial Japanese Army relied on six key fighters. This ranking breaks down the Army's top six fighters to reveal which one actually came out on top. The Ki-27 bridged two eras, proving a monoplane could still outturn a biplane, but at what cost? The Ki-27 excelled in dogfight thanks to its exceptionally low wing loading, light structure, and responsive controls. Its stress skin design allowed tight G-turns without failure. However, its armament of only two 7.7mm Type 89 machine guns was minimal even for late 1930s standards. With about 500 rounds per gun and no cannon option, the Ki-27 entered World War II severely underarmed. The Ki-27's variable pitch propeller improved climb and cruising efficiency. Its 470 km per hour top speed was competitive for its time, but soon overtaken by faster fighters. Survivability of the Ki-27 was extremely poor. It lacked armor, self-stealing tanks, and robust structure, making it vulnerable to even limited return fire. Fixed landing gear also added drag and exposure. Pilots praised the Ki-27 for gentle stalls, excellent low-speed handling, and easy transition from biplanes. Its 650 horsepower radial engine and simple systems eased maintenance on rough airstrips. Entering production in 1937 and built in over 3,300 units, the Ki-27 dominated early battles in China and at Kalkin Goal with superior maneuverability. The Ki-27 bridged Japan's biplane tradition and the monoplane era, ensuring that excellent agility still mattered in late 1930s combat. However, it was already obsolete by 1941, due to fixed gear, rifle caliber guns, and lack of protection. Ki-43 terrified early war allied pilots with its agility, yet for Japanese pilots, it meant dancing on the razor's edge of survival. Early in the war, Ki-43 outmaneuvered most allied fighters with its extreme turning and climbability. Its small size made visual tracking harder, and its maneuverability reflected Japan's pre-war doctrine. Armament progressed from two 7.7 mm on the early Ki-43 to two 12.7 mm on later variants, offering improved but still limited firepower. The 12.7 mm explosive rounds could damage Allied fighters, but struggled against heavily built bombers. Top speed varied by model, with later variant reaching about 530 km per hour. It was adequate in 1942, but soon surpassed by faster Allied aircraft. This allowed Japanese pilots choose when to engage or disengage. The Ki-43's light airframe originally lacked armor and self-sealing tanks. Early structural issues even caused wings to fail in high-G dives. Later variants added limited armor and fuel tank protection. Pilots praised the Ki-43's flight characteristics. However, control stiffening at high dive speeds which limited pursuit of modern Allied fighters. Serving from 1941 to 1945, the Ki-43 became the most produced Japanese Army fighter with nearly 6,000 built. Its long-range, fuel efficiency, and simple maintenance suited operations in many field areas. The Ki-43 modernized the Ki-27's philosophy with retractable gear, combat flaps, and heavier 12.7mm guns, offering greater speed and firepower while retaining exceptional agility. The Ki-61 was a heavy, armored airplane among light, fast-turning fighters. Its European design promised power but delivered headaches. With higher wing loading, the Ki-61 sacrificed low-speed agility for speed, weight, and stability. It could not match the tight turns of lighter Japanese fighters, and many pilots preferred older types for dogfights. The Ki-61 carried two imported 20mm cannons plus two 12.7mm machine guns, giving it firepower comparable to Western fighters. However, once imported stocks ran out, Japan switched to domestic guns with reduced reliability and performance. The Ki-61 could reach about 580 km per hour, and this placed a hin among Japan's faster mid-war fighters, which made it suitable for interception rules. A strong three-spar wing and compact fuselage gave the Ki-61 uncommon rigidity among Japanese fighters. However, its liquid-cooled engine was a serious weakness, as minor cooling system damage could cause rapid seizure. 
the Key 61's inline engine layout and heavier controls produce predictable handling at speed. However, controls were heavier than earlier Japanese fighters. Complex construction and its engine made the Key 61 maintenance heavy. In tropical climates, the engine overheated easily, suffered bearing failures, and required constant servicing. The Key 61 added real survivability and high velocity firepower to a force long reliant on ultralight fighters. Its rigid frame, cannon armed variants, and high speed dive capability made it closer to Western high energy fighters. Hated by rookie pilots and feared by Allied bomber crews, this high speed fighter was either a misunderstood genius or a tactical failure. The Key 44 was built for speed and climb, not maneuverability. Its small wings gave height wing loading, which limited low speed turns. Standard armament of the Key 44 was four 12.7 mm machine guns, and some variants had extra two 20 mm cannons. Its heavier weapon options made the Key 44 more effective against heavy bombers. Powered by the Hanare engine, the Key 44 could reach about 560 km per hour. Comparative trials showed it outperformed the P40E in speed and climb. A stressed skin metal structure, strong wings, and a rugged radio engine allowed high-speed dives and interception stresses. Armor and self-sealing tanks were added, but offered limited protection against 50 caliber fire. The Key 44 demanded skill to fly. High landing speeds and heavy controls frustrated new pilots accustomed to gentle handling of Key 43. Low-speed behavior remained unforgiving, which restricted its adoption among less experienced pilots. Entering service in 1942, about 1,200 Ki-44s were built. Mechanically reliable but short-ranged, it served mainly as a high-altitude interceptor. Despite handling challenges, it was one of the most capable Japanese Army fighters. The Ki-44 avoided the Ki-61's unreliable inline engine. It could achieve better climb and interception performance with a rugged radial engine. It delivered speed, firepower options, and snap roll agility ideal for defense against B-29s. Supposedly the greatest fighter Japan ever built, the Hayate was ultimately doomed by the nation's collapsing industry. The Ki-84 combined late war speed with impressive maneuverability. Its Fowler-type butterfly flaps expanded wing area and were enough to outturn P-51 and P-47 at low speed. Standard Ki-84 armament used two 12.7mm machine guns and two 20mm cannons, which were powerful against fighters and bombers alike. Powered by the Hanare engine, the Ki-84 delivered excellent climb and acceleration. On Allied high-octane fuel, it reached nearly 700 km per hour, surpassing the P-51D. The Ki-84 incorporated improved armor, armored glass, and a strong metal airframe offering far better protection than earlier Japanese fighters. However, late war production had crippled durability due to poor steel heat treatment. Pilots found the Hayate responsive and predictable in combat, offering solid control feel and good stability. Although takeoffs and landings required caution, airborne handling remained widely praised. Over 3,500 Ki-84s were built, and performance tests showed it could match top Allied fighters when engine maintenance and fuel quality met standards. But the Hanare engine demanded precise manufacturing Japan could no longer provide. The Ki-84 blended the Ki-44's raw power with Ki-43's agility, as well as far heavier armament, making it among Japan's formidable late war fighters on paper. With proper fuel, it could even rival the Mustang. Born from desperation, the Ki-100 was an emergency conversion that miraculously evolved into Imperial Japanese Army's single most effective fighter of the war. The Ki-100 transformed the Ki-61 airframe into a superb dogfighter by replacing its heavy inline engine with a lighter radial, cutting weight and improving balance. In addition, wing loading dropped, handling sharpened, and the aircraft gained excellent low-speed control. Armament typically consisted of two nose-mounted 20mm cannons and two wing-mounted 12.7mm machine guns. The concentrated nose firepower gave exceptional accuracy without convergence issues. Powered by the reliable Mitsubishi radial, the Ki-100 reached nearly 600 km per hour in combat conditions. Although not the fastest of 1945, 
It excelled at low to medium altitudes where late war B-29 raids were increasingly common. The Ki-100 featured an all-metal structure, pilot armor, and self-sealing tanks. Replacing Ki-61's liquid-cooled engine also meant removing radiator vulnerabilities, making it more resilient to battle damage. Pilots consistently described the Ki-100 as exceptionally easy to handle. The lighter nose improved control harmony, visibility was good, and stall behavior was gentle, especially in the cut-down canopy version. With only around 380 built, the Ki-100 was Japan's most reliable late-war fighter. The rugged Kinzai family engine needed minimal maintenance, performed well on poor fuel, and dramatically simplified logistics. The Ki-100 ranks first because it balanced agility, reliability, accuracy, and ease of use better than any other Japanese army fighter.